than this guy, right? You know, he's just kind of walking around, you know, think he's big and bad. And that's really all the way to it. You just, you just blast the guy. But if you want to do as fast as possible, um, you want to do, I can't do it that well yet, but it's called the CFO technique, and the reason why it's called the CFO is because this boss is the CFO, and this is where this technique came from. So what you do is, you shoot, and you shoot a lemon, and you want to hit him to the point where like you're, it's like you're keeping him in iframes. Which is short for invincibility. And that was a lot faster fight, right? Again, I haven't quite mastered it yet, but that is the uh, that is the intro stage. Like I said, it's very short and sweet. Uh, if you want, matter of fact, I will just since it's so short, I will do a quick run of that just to give an example of you know how it is when you run this. Now I will say this: when you see the ready sign. On the fourth blink is when you gain control of X, you'll see. Missed that guy, but it's okay. You really mainly want to shoot him in case you accidentally bonk into him. You actually want to double kick there too, but it's easier said than done. And you want to be as close to the right wall as possible going into this room. But you also want to try not to like accidentally touch it either. Because it will kill your momentum. So anyway, I just start blasting the guy, right? Oops. Honestly, I would have probably reset right there. Lemons seem to do the same damage. Well, uh, going through the corridors of where the, uh, the things come down and latch on the bottom, those things at the beginning of the stage, uh, the, the driller bits, uh, they are actually, um, 2 HP. And hitting them with a lemon, a dash lemon will just, you might as well hit them with a green shot. Otherwise, you'll probably... Excuse me. Otherwise, it'll probably just be one damage. Excuse me again. So from here, you have two options. Uh, both of these options are equally uh, deserving to go first. Um, some will go this first. Some will go this first. This is the gator stage. You're riding in a big gator tank thingy. <laughs> and this is basically the forest. Uh, you'd be fighting a sponge there. Um, any percent, though, you go, you go here first no matter what. But most of us, including me, go here first. And there's a reason why. Alright, so let me introduce you to an enemy that produces enemies. It's the spawn choker thingy. Which can be destroyed. But I recommend destroying that thing first before. Because otherwise, those things will just keep coming. However, the good thing is, you can use this to your advantage later on in a later game. Which we're not going to get into. So these, I just put like three damage on because I don't. Three, four, five. They do five. 
so there so it's five hit points so so a full charge shot or a dash lemon can end them okay I lied they're they're four damage because I just put two dash lemons in them so there's a capsule up here and uh, the most casual way is if you have the leg upgrade you can do air dash or the most more speed run uh, way for any percent you use this well we don't got none of those and this is supposed to be our f and this will be hypothetically our first stage And yes, Code Man, I agree. They get they get a little weirder in Japanese. At the boss health bar. I was probably shooting when it wasn't a dash thing, I don't know. <laughs> but the thing is, while you're in dash motion, you will see how I took that out with just two dash lemons. As long as you're doing this. If you jump, if you're doing just a neutral jump, and you shoot, that's a dash lemon. So anyway, like I say, we don't have this nor the boots, so... Um, this is what we're going to do instead. From here, and I know it's kind of hard to see because of the wall vibrating, but um, we will what's called a double kick onto this thing. I forgot to demonstrate a double kick on the intro stage, actually. But, um, you will, need, you will need to use that visual cue to double kick, or at least single kick, up to that right there, where I'm about to shoot at. To kick at that corner. So, and it's a bit tricky. And depending on if you play on emulator or if you play on a CRT, it can be even trickier. See? It took me about like five attempts. And here's the capsule. And the reason why we're up here? Because this is the buster upgrade. Also, uh, everybody, please read Nightbot's recent message. Content warning for X2 Buster only. Uh, flashing lights, bright explosions. So please be aware of that. Anyway. And I'm going to make a save state right here. And that's what it's like when you shoot a double uh, double charge shot. And this is probably the ar arguably the best arm upgrade in all the X series. And here's another cool thing. You can shoot them both faster on the wall. For a guaranteed fast damage. So that will definitely come in handy for the boss fights. Also, notice how the background, like outside, it's all uh, nighttime and stuff. Because it was sunny, it was sunny earlier. Now it's basically nighttime. It's about to be even darker. So that's a really cool thing that you know Capcom added with it, with games like this, and I believe they did something similar on the first game. But enough about that. So, if you if you're the, if you're the speed runner, you want to essentially free fall from from here. And how you do that is actually a little faster, just to buffer the jump. Take off of that and go down here. 
Also, don't fall in the spikes. Okay, so let me let me put something on pause and go to go to the wall physics. So you notice me kicking the wall. You miss notice me kicking twice. There is uh, seven pixels. You can be away from the wall and still kick it, but only the Super Nintendo games of the X series have this type of thing. So you can even like you can even spam and just do hilarious stuff like this. Also, in case you're wondering, I'm I'm uh, reaching over with my right hand and mashing the L button doing that. So moving on, you want to buffer the uh, the jump button so you can jump on the first frame. And you just fall down like that. And you want to, typically, you want to kick off that. Otherwise, you can just kick off here too. You also want to avoid those dudes. And then, wrong a Gundam. Mostly just to break this open, but uh, it is slightly faster just to hover over around. Okay, now here's our first safety up here. See that heart thing up there? See the wall that we gotta get past to get up there? Well, this is where we use iframes to our advantage. See that guy right there? We're gonna bait him to shoot us. Like this. Well, hold on. It is a bit scary, but um, once you get to if you once you practice it and get the hang of it, um, it's fairly easy. And you want to hold a charge to shoot. And another impossible uh, wall climb. But we're just going to mosey on there. All I'm going to say is take your time going up that shaft. Use the elevator in the bottom if you need to. But we are going to move on to our boss. So if you're speed running, just go ahead and bonk this dude. It's like falling and bonk him. But as soon as you do, hold the charge button. Otherwise, just take your time. Uh, make sure you're... You also don't want to be in there full charge. Like full charge with the buster upgrade anyway. And there's a reason why. Just to recap, I accidentally uh, forget to uh, make a save state, so we're just going to do a brief recap of what I've shown you so far. No biggie. And we just ride this up here. Oops. Okay. Alright, so like I said, bonk, hold the charge. But while you're charging, get to this door as fast as possible. Because you only want the yellow golden charge around you. And I'm going to make a safe state right here. Now, don't see it's fast enough to get him. And from there, that's when you hold a full charge. And then you want RNG to uh, basically bully you. You don't want him to dive in the oil too much. We'll, we'll call that oil. So 
So then you just want to wail on them with uh, dash lemons. When he does that, you want to charge. And then he's dive twice. Which, speed run rise, that means that's not very good RNG. See how I'm just using, uh... See how I was using dash lemons to, to keep the DPS on them? Now, not every single boss will be affected by dash lemons, unfortunately. But the majority of them will. Do we have any questions? Well, if not, we'll be moving on to our next stage, who is also very RNG heavy with the boss. And this one is uh, Wire Sponge, or Wire Hetimarl. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering the last name of that, but you're going against SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Essentially, gone evil. And can throw a tantrum. Which we'll get to when we get there. So, let's jump right in. Now, I was not going to show um, that I'm going to have the Buster upgrade. But, we'll pretend we're going to have the Buster upgrade. Even though, for the most part, until you get to the boss, you're not going to be using it. So, right off the bat, there's actually a secret right here. This wall looks awfully suspicious. So I wonder what would happen if I climb it. What was that? Is that a heart tank? So they decided to hide the heart tank in plain sight going up here. This little platform up here. So you can just come in and just free heart tank. More optimal way is a double kick. We also gotta have like make sure like you're not going to get caught on the way down which as you can see is actually quite hard Let's see so you want to charge from here and then these things i kind of messed that up but you notice like it's ringing and it's pointing in the opposite direction we're going that's actually screwing with our momentum yeah, you see the extra life up there. Well, there's something else up there. So, the safer way would actually be to go back and go up here. You would want to, of course, make sure this is at the top of this peak before getting up there. And you want to dash jump. You want to dash back, dash jump back over. Destroy that thing. Get this if you desire. And then you can get this sub tank. And you're at the elevator. So to recap, get this. Not bonk into that. <laughs> Whoops. Oh god. Okay. Alright, so what I'm going to do... There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'll make a safe state right here. So we can have these set. So you just gonna wait from here. Go up here. On the other side. Oops. Destroy that thing. And grab this. Now the speedrun version is a little more trickier than that. You want to dash off of this, and you gotta like wall kick that, and you gotta do a neutral kick. And the reason why 
It's called a neutral kick, as you can find a wall. Well, this wall will do. So notice what notice I'm facing the other way with the character from the wall. And look what I do next. Notice that it automatically turn X around. That can be used to your advantage and no matter what style of play you, you decide to do. Dang it. Then that has to do with the, the 7 pixel uh, window of kicking between the person or the character and the wall. So when you go up there, you kind of want to neutral, kick that, and you don't have to neutral kick that one, but that would be the faster way. And that would be kind of like the elevator skip, when you just... And otherwise, you can just, if you're just casual, you can just ride it up. Oh yeah, beware, like, uh, drops will just fall through the elevator for some stupid reason. And I don't know why I did that that way, but it worked out. Otherwise, I can just do it all correctly. Notice that notice when I start charging my shots because I since I choose uh, Gator first, like I I practice as if like I already have the upgrade already, so that way I can get better at not overcharging. Because when you have your charge busters at full charge and you release them, you will not be able to move until the animation is done. So, you definitely do not want to overcharge if you want to speedrun. So, I'm going to save the state here. You can get out of here. And there's these little weird things called gap jumps. We're going to revisit that. Um, these ones are not as hard as uh, the ones in the intro stage, but you know any gap jump is not really is very is an advanced uh, advanced uh, thing. So uh, notice that um, I'm purposely going for health drops, even if my health is full. My health ain't full now, but I'm going for these health drops, even when my health is full. And the reason being is this. When your health is full, you can fill this tank up and you can use as a backup to fill your health up. And that's what we're going to focus on. And the good thing is with this game, you can get all four of them. Alright, so typically you don't want to charge with this next one. But if you want to, this it, you know, it you know, you could get an advantage out of it because it really depends on the RNG. So with this guy, you want him to go up like that. And the things that he plants on the ground, you want to like destroy them. And see what's happening. This is what you do not want. Especially in speedrun, but we're also going to say casual because, you know, this is a waste of- you just, you're just watching them doing a temper tantrum. And the- everything- the, the bolts that are going down, they do a great amount of damage. And his body does more damage than it did before he started doing a tantrum tantrum. So, that's- that's a grip of reasons why you don't want him to do a temper tantrum. 
What you do want is him doing what he's doing now. Especially when it comes to the kill. See, he's being haved now. And that's what you consider good RNG. See how the fight just got done much quicker because he didn't pull a temperature tantrum? So that's about wraps up uh, Sponge Stage. Sponge, um, along with this guy down here, very RNG heavy. They can waste your, a lot of time of yours during a speed run or just any run. So next up, um, what you will notice on the map in between the, uh, the stage selects, uh, there might be three little teleports on each of these uh, locations. You will see that that's something you do not have to worry about unless you actually intend doing 100% in the game, which we're not in this case. So from here, I typically would go down to uh, Bubble Craft. With a reason. Actually, we're going to go to low percent for this. Because in any percent, by the time you get to crab, you're going you're going to have all the armor and almost every heart anyway. So we're going to act like we're not. So again, let's pretend we have the armor upgrade, but. Also, listen to the music on this. Look at the scenery out there. Capcom has a way of details, I know that. So as I was saying, you're about to go in the cave, you're basically, you can tell you're about to go underwater, and it's sooner than you think. And then you're going to eventually see this thing. And you can get hurt by that laser thingy. So, this is the way in a speedrun to do. Typically, you want to be farther in. You can avoid the laser like that. And we're going to go up here. And there's a heart up here. And we're going to do this again. Yeah, it's a bit tricky to get up there, though. And since I did that right, I took no damage from the laser when I normally would have. Because of how much farther in I went in. Now, that's something you do not want to happen. When you try to get up there, you just almost miss... You just barely miss the, uh... That platform. There's another way to do it, but it's very ill-advised. I don't know why that's happening. I'll just have a state, state saves here. Alright, and here's another one. You gotta use this slope to get to it. And what I mean by that is... Let's... Let that go. So what I mean by that is... What just hit me? I just looked away for a minute. Actually, you know, that guy hit. So, uh... There's a, a another awesome mechanic. 
where if you go down the slope, you'll not only move a little faster, but you'll jump a little higher too, like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump from the same place on both on both times. So standing jump. All right, now I see what I mean. So we're going to use that to get up here. And you can jump on the water. Because Reploid physics. Uh, mash jump just to make it easier for you. And then do another jump on the water. Don't miss that platform. <laughs> do not miss that platform. Try to do it in fast motion. And now that we have full health, make a safe state here. This is a great opportunity to fill your heart by uh, your sub tank. Please forgive me, I forgot to disable that alarm. Anyways. Because this place is a very good like is very good with like drops so it's like your opportunity to fill your tank so to speak see I'm almost I'm already at half just because of all that so without further ado I'm gonna do it one more time actually and shoot that guy too up there Notice that I'm continually using dash lemons. Now you definitely do not want to start with a charge. In fact, you want to charge shoot a lemon, but hold it just in case this sh bubble shield goes up, and you'll see what I mean. So this guy's basic jerk, but you can bait him to. Uh, do that thing. But it's, oh, it's always RNG for him to put up his shield. But while you're putting up his shield, you're his shield and you're jumping over him, you're stopping him from doing other things. See if you don't make him jump like I just did. And you just want to try to get rid of the bubble. He'll start doing some other things. He'll just become a real pain. So Definitely best strategy is to make him do that and smack him with a dash lemon or a charge shot, whatever you prefer. It will just be easier for a dash lemon because you don't have to wait for the charge. So this whole time you're definitely baiting him. And he will be a ping about it. 
he will waste your time. Notice I don't shoot the lemming in, until I know for sure I can smack him with it, even if it means waiting so I'm point blank with him. And also make sure you're not hitting him while he's already in high frames. So that was Bubble Crab in the stage. Now, this next stage is a fun stage. It's fun if you're uh, careful and you uh, execute correctly. You'll see what I mean. This is uh, Overdrive Ostrich, or I guess in the Japanese game is Sonic Ostrich. Eh, I forgot to make a save says alright, because it's not the important So, you're going to also look like you're on the highway or some stuff, right? So, you can just dump over that thing, or you can shoot it down, it's up to you. It'll always go this way. But you're stopping this dude from running you over. But, for the most part, just jump over it. And jump over this dude. It's doable. And, uh, there's a thing I've been practicing recently uh, about fast way of going down the stairs stairs going down the ladder but you have to like make sure your inputs are done correctly because it's, it's kind of tight timing see how I messed up and it's like already like I almost had it. It's easier with this one. Well, not that one. With this, no. With this one, because you can just do that. You can actually glitch through that with, with the chain. But we're not using chain. It's Buster only. Otherwise, just uh, wait till this one goes down and then... Now this is where we want to save the state at, right here. For the reason of this thing. Once you get on this thing, you want to press and hold your dash button all the way. And also anything in front of it until you destroy this door that I'm going to show you that. Well, it's not a door. I don't know what it's called, but you got to you got to shoot it down and turn it into a ramp instead you want to shoot what was in front of you so I'm gonna get on this thing shoot this guy shoot this guy and mash this and then shoot that guy and then everything else until up to here and then jump over that that's really hard to do and here's the next heart you see that spike wall thing you gotta not you you can't crash. If you crash, you're dead. As simple as that. Now what you can do is you can take it with you to make it a little faster. Ram through that and then just go through there. So let's recap a little bit. Mash this door down. I guess take this guy with you. Shoot this door three times and shoot that three times. Keep going. Turn around. I might hit the wall. I mean, if you hit the wall, at least you get. At least you got the heart. You'll. It, you'll. You're trading a life for it. But so if you if you are to do that, make sure. In fact, in the beginning of this in the beginning of this stage, before you go any further, make sure you go to the menu and check how many lives you actually have. If you have zero, take the optimal death and then do it that way. So that way, when you get the heart and you die, you don't have to start the uh, the stage all over again.
But that is like the only way you get the heart. And that's like the only useful thing you can get on, uh... On this stage. But now I'm going to show you what you do. Without it. So I keep going. Slow down a little bit. And then keep going. That's the fastest way to get through the stage. Now we're done with that. Don't fall down there. We want to shoot this rocket. Here's the thing. I'm not the one doing the shooting. It's like one of those automatic cutscene things. Alright, so here's Overdrive Ostrich, aka Potato Ostrich. Nah, he ain't that easy. So you're just going to hit him with the dash lemons right off the bat. You don't get a chance to charge. Oh, I'm glad he did that, because I almost forgot. If he jumps up and do a thing like he did, um, there is a window of opportunity like I just did to hit him again. Because his iframes will reset once he's up at the up there. The only thing is, is like he jumps high, so he's going to have to do that at a lower plane setting to you. And that's Overdrive Ostrich. He can keep doing that. He will start hopping around instead, which is a bit more dangerous, but makes it a little easier to avoid him. You just da dash under him. And next, we're going to go to Crystal Snail Sage. And I'm going to show you a, a, wait, a ride armor trick. So, notice there's slip physics, and this is the ride armor. Before I go any further, I'm just going to jump and hold the button jump. Notice that it didn't last that long. Now, how about I jump at full height, but instead of holding it, I'm going to tap it. That stayed in there a bit longer, right? Well, we're going to use that concept to our advantage. And we're also going to use this. Which is faster than just a normal uh, dash. So, as we're up here, as soon as you fall off, hold the shoe button. And let go. And, and do that. And that's where the heart is. Come over here, do the same thing. And that's how speedrunners get this get this particular heart. Now if you want it didn't show up. If you want this this will normally respawn. But this see there it is. If you want, you can take this with you over this way to a certain point. But we're not going to do this for example for this example. So, uh, Kawabunga. So that's an example thing that you gotta have to worry about. There's like two, there's three, yeah, there's two more of these in ahead. That one's just a warning, he's like, hey, you're going to have to be dealing with this kind of thing. So there's two ways to do this. You can either take the ladder, or you can just do this. Maybe. There we go. Or, do this really tricky thing. It's a low percent thing, but it's very, it's very precise. 
And if you screw up, well... Yeah. But there's a certain spot that you can dash jump from on the other side of the spikes and still keep your momentum. And it saves... I feel like at least three three seconds. As you can see, I'm having a hard time. It's it's one of the like hardest things to do. So we're going to ignore that, we're just going to keep going. Actually, let's go back to 80% real quick. Because this is where I want to demonstrate the, uh... Go back here. Alright, now we actually have these things. We'll just act like we have the heart. And we're back here. We'll just go the easier yet slower way. You actually want to start your charge right here. And then, instead of releasing the shots simultaneously, you're just going to... Start charging here. Instead of releasing simultaneously, you're going to be doing it like this. And then from now on... The thing is, you want to do this damageless, but it's hard. And there is a reason why that. And see how I got a refill? No. So now we can just do this. That's the reason. To add to your uh, sub tank. I'm actually spending a little bit more time on this than I thought I would be. On, on the 8 maps. Sorry, I'll make it work. But anyway, so there's another one of them falling slide rock thingies. Just grab one of these. I guess let them hit you. Go up here, hit that thing so I can be out of your way. Which it wasn't. Now this is a tricky one. I've had a hard time trying to figure out how to open up with this fight. <laughs> and this fight is very tricky. So, I'm going to do my best to get you through this fight. And casually, it's not pretty. So, here we go. I'm going to dash through this. I'm not charging, because I... So, here's what I'm normally doing. It's all about timing. So, dash, shoot, and then try to dash under him, which that didn't work. See? And you don't want him to go up after that if he... I guess the closer you are, the better chance you have you want to hit him. Now, here's the thing. Notice I didn't hit him with a dash shot this time. I slowed myself up before I did. If I would have hit him with it with that and his health was even lower, we will probably do the time stop on you. And I will show you what that looks like actually.
Maybe. Ow. Did that on purpose so I can get him to do that. This is exactly what you don't want. He will slow time on you. Alright, so that's a uh, crystal stage. Crystal snail. Now we're going to go to centipede. Now these ones are probably the trickiest the trickiest items to get in the eight maps. And there's a reason. Alright, so this is like kinda like a security type of place, you can tell. So you can just jump over this guy. Hit him with that, and then try to off screen shoot that guy. Hold a charge, or um, you might not have to do a charge. We'll hold a charge anyway. Should have made a save state. That's my fault. So holding a charge, and don't release this charge until you're wall climbing, so I can just go out. Now I'm going to save a state here, and we're going to go through here. We're going to make sure we miss these things. Also, these are shootable, these little light purple ones, these are actually shootable. You can get drops from it. So this could this place could be another way you can but again it's uh this kind of RNG based. So let's recap with that. And we're also gonna move further at the same time. You can get those light purple boxes if you want. Now I jump here and release that just so I can, okay, just so I can get squished actually. Let's try that again. Jump, hit that. Huh. Is it an advanced trick? I don't know why I did that. So let's not focus on that then. I'll show you to you in a little bit later. We are going to skip these. Jump over that. We're going to wait till that, because that will squish. Wait till those fall. And then get here. Now you want to jump up the edge of that just so you can get the corner of that and get here. And I'll show that again. Oh snap. There it is, that's what I was trying to do. And then you just wait for this. Jump at the edge of that so you can get there. Now I'm gonna make another safe state. That is the third sub tank. The fourth one will be on the next stage. The fourth and final one I should say. So now Get a charge in. And then you just want to mash dash lemons on this thing. And you gotta hit the hilt on it. Sometimes it'll go that as, as fast as this, sometimes it won't. It's another health drop right there. Now, this next part... I'll, I'll make a safe state here. This next part, I'll show you the slow version of it, and then 
slow but safe, and then I'll show you the fast version of it. So you can just hold on. Land here. This is actually what I used to do to kick from here and then go down here. And then here's the fast version. Nope. You don't you don't want to get caught by the lights. And then when you're going across this, you want to dash jump, because otherwise you'll create more lag if you don't. So that's one of the times you don't want to like do ground dashes for the for the sake of lag reduction. Because this game can get very laggy. Grab that if you need to. Start a charge. And then there's this guy. So this fight, I missed. You want to hit him both with that. Dash lemons do not work on this guy. And uh, green shots also only do one. So just, just hit him with lemons, regular lemons. Fight would have been over, but like I didn't hit him with the first charge shot. All right, so this is a tricky part. You do not want to get crushed by that. And you want to jump over that block. I forgot to start charging. I didn't want that to happen. See how much more laggier I made it because I ground dashed? Sometimes you'd rather wait for him to make the move than you hit him with those. Sometimes I just... So I can keep up with his DPS. Sometimes you just gotta do this. We also don't want to get hit so you can get the maximum type of time save. Also, you want to just do ground dashes through that corridor. So you want to charge, but you want to release this, and there's a reason. And then you start charging. Now, notice that, like, I shot a charge shot uh, during a dash while I, was, uh, I was already had another shot ready for me. For some odd reason, like, you can develop a regular charge. And you can shoot it just like if you didn't have the um, the upgrade. I'm not sure what it is, but we use it to our advantage. But what we're looking for, for him to do that. And there's a, I didn't do it right. This is a tricky one. There's a glitch that you can make him stay doing the tailspin, but it's very, it's very hard to do. So we're not going to focus on that. Instead, we're going to focus on how much he's going to wreck your uh, directional pad because of how much you got to wiggle when you get him down. See what I mean? But then you can just do this. Normally he'll only get you once. Depending on how good you fight him. But this is... Uh... This is Centipede's uh, fight for the most part. He's also RNG based heavy. And uh, 
hard stage to get through. Up next, we got Stag. This is my favorite stage. And this is where we're going to get the final sub tank for safety. So, right off the bat, You're going to see a beetle here. You want to jump on this beetle, right? You want to let let this beetle take you all the way up here. You want to get up here and get this thing. You want to destroy those and you want to climb. You want to grab this. Climb all the way up here. Blast that thing and grab that. Notice how much time I had. Um, to get the uh, capsule that was over here. These capsules are free to grab. So, it's, you know, it's pretty decent. Uh, it, will pr it will decently fill your uh, sub tank up. Okay, now I've done the better version of that. Definitely want to hold a charge. And then you want to just climb. Make sure you do as many vertical jumps as possible. For maximum height. You double kick here so you can clear that stack. That second stack. Oh wait, no, not yet. I'm not doing that yet. Okay. So, you want to grab that, and then you proceed to going over here. You want to just jump over those. Now, this climb right here, this climb is gnarly. This, this stage will break your hands if you're trying to speedrun this. I will warn you this. It has wrecked my hands plenty. So... These pillars will move as soon as you land on them. But... If you go fast enough, you won't have to worry about the, the beetle uh, coming coming down and appearing. And you won't need him to because there's no real reason for, him, for you to need him. Also, grab this. I'm gonna save state here. And we're gonna go through these pillars like that again. Do that again. So this is the climb I'm talking about. Now you see me dash into that. If you're speed running, as soon as you're done as soon as you grab this. Jump and hold left. And the reason being, see if I can actually show you rather than explain. Well, I can show you then explain. Didn't do that right. Start from here. Whoops. See how I just made X take that hit and then just keep going? For some reason, if you're against a wall taking taking a hit and you press against the wall, um, that hit animation will shorten. But so will the iframe, so you gotta move quickly. And then the rest, you just kind of taking bonks. And this is, that is, uh, the stag stage. Now you're probably wondering why I'm in here with a charge. Well, to open up the fight, you want to hit him with this, the second charge. You also want to buffer the jump button. 
I will show why. Now, I've not mastered this, so... But this is also what they do in any percent. See, I messed up already. Something like that. And then from here you can just kind of take it easy. For the most part, if you go up, you'll go up and try to like bounce back and forth and stuff. Try to ram you because it's a ram. So not only that was the fourth and final sub tank in there, that was also the final heart tank that we are able to, to obtain without boss weapons. So We'll just go briefly through this stage. There's a couple of mini bosses you gotta deal with, but it's whatever. I also noticed that, uh. Yeah. So, actually, since there's not a, a lot of time left, we are gonna skip this stage. Well, I'm going to show you a little bit of the stage, but we're going to skip this stage for the most part. So this stage is basically like the junkyard of the game. And a lot of lag to create. So remember the slope jumping thing I was telling you about? You want to do that here if you're speed running. And we're going to show you uh, one of the sub bosses right now. So that's basically what you're dealing with. And then as the boss. This boss goes from a cocoon to a moth. Butterfly. And the body hurts. Do not, like, when in final form, do not touch the body. That is 8 damage right off the bat. Why does that hurt so much? I don't know. But for now. We're going to go back to low percent mode, and there's actually a very reason why I'm going back to low percent mode. I think I have time to show you these two very difficult bosses to fight Buster on me. And this is also how I've trained myself to survive better. In fact, this is the, na this is the name of the game for these bosses, is Survival. And once I pick the right stage, bonk, bonk, it's not what's supposed to happen. Bonk, bonk, and bonk, that's how you get across there. Now if you want, you can farm here, but for the sake of you know, being a, uh, being in rookie shoes, we're going to act, we're going to farm you and just act like we're like pure rookies. Destroy that thing so it don't create any lag. 
You can gap jump this. I've actually did this during a run before. Hmm. And you're basically just going up there fast enough before... Ah, I didn't mean to start all the way over. I want to make sure we're at full health with this. That gap jump feels free, I'm not gonna lie. Alright, screw it. Let's just go through here. The slow, casual way. How oh, that still hit me? This is actually a fun stage. In my opinion. Okay, so I'm gonna make a save state here. You can actually get under that, this. You can dash under that. You can jump over this. You can. And this is, would be the last climb. Make sure you dash kick over. Also, that scorpion thing would be the last resort. Alright, so, to survive this fight, oh my goodness, and I forgot to charge. I'm going to save it anyway. You want to use these Yokus to an advantage as well as, as far as, uh, defending goes. Like, you do not want to get hit by that spike ball. That's six damage, I think. So while you're doing that, you're looking for an opening to smack him with a charge shot. And depending on where he is and how he has his Yoku's, um, he might just screw you over. And it's a very tough thing. And I know, and even for you speedrunners, guys interested in speedrunning this game, take this fight slow. Take this fight, uh, Careful, you know, because this guy's box ball, ball and chain is no joke. It's all about patience, timing, and diligence. Diligence, discipline. It's I may I may have probably look made that look easy, but I guarantee you, it took me many hours to get used to like not relying on your sub tanks. So I think this is one of those things where um, learning to survive first will help get you faster better. 
if that makes sense. Same with this next boss. Which shortly we'll get, get into in a minute, as well as the stage. Oh, the next stage. Also, by the way, if you if you play on hardware and you have the SD to SNES, to access the, the other stages, you just hold select and press Y for some of these stages. So this next stage, this stage is fine. So, we're just going to go through this casually. We're not going to focus on speed with this. I haven't been yet, so it's probably right if we actually focus a lot more on going through this casually. And it's not casual enough. Let's start that over. Jeez. Because you want to have uh, full health by the time you get to this boss. If anything, if you really feel like you have to... Um, damn it. And for some reason, the blue shot totally obliterates those construction looking guys. But, like, what I was going to say is, if you have to, don't fall in the spikes. That was not what I was going to say, but still solid advice. <laughs> if you have to, um, when you get to the end of the stage, also make sure you have enough lives to do this. Sacrifice a death so you can just start with... Um, Start with full health, and you don't have to worry about using a uh, using a sub tank. But again, you gotta make sure you have the lives to do it. Water physics. <laughs> Alright, so here's our elevator. We're going to go to the side like this. Go on the other side. We're going to bonk into that so we can dash across the spikes and go in that. And like I said, we're going to take an optimal death so we can have full health to do this. And I warn you right now. It's going to this first part is going to require some mashing. Also, word of advice: if you also have, if you also playing on doing this on hardware, you have to SD to SNES, and you want to practice the save state. Don't make the save state until you see the health fill up. Otherwise, it'll the state will corrupt, and then you have to reset your system and make it again. So anyways, assuming you are going to have the, uh, the arm upgrade again, uh, shoot and dash, and you would want to have a blue charge ready. I didn't do that right. And you want to get rid of the first turret first. It's 
try that again. What makes this also hard? Ow. It's the moving platforms. You can get caught under those. Oh snap. Jump. Okay, cool. Here's the next part. In my in my opinion, the easier part. All you gotta do now is dodge these. They will go horizontal then diagonal. Horizontal, vertical, and diagonal. Separately. And like I said, you will probably have the full charge shot, so if you can try to nail him with the full charge shot but also keep in mind to dodge these he might become a butthole and you know put like those vertical ones right under you and there's going to be times where it seems like he's doing it on purpose but for the most part it is RNG and getting hit by those is like 3 damage I'm probably going to end up doing this until either he dies or I die. And it will get a, a bit testy. It will get a bit testy. Because for some reason his, posi his position on in the, in the uh, cockpit will different, differ too. And I think the position changes each time he gets hit. It's like it resets every time he gets hit. If you're on the bottom, he'll go up to the top. And it'll make it harder for you to not receive damage. I'm glad I was able to do that first try, to be honest. Because that's not easy. But now we are going to get into what is easy. Also, I hope I've been explaining things well enough. Um, it's a lot of information to intake, and I left my notes on my other laptop, so yeah. So hopefully I'm doing a well job of explaining things for everybody. So this is my second favorite stage. The boss is probably one of the easiest bosses since the intro boss that you're probably going to end up fighting. So we're going to go here. And this is where um, the double charge shot is going to come in handy. Even though you don't have to see me have it right now. Um, you know... We're going to pretend we have it, and I will give some insight on where the best place would be. You'll be, be using idolizing a lot, especially because you're going to be on the wall a lot for this fight. So, right off the bit, right off the bit, see, already, that's bad RNG. You don't want this guy to jump if you're speedrunning. You want him to throw the frisbee so he can damage boost you up there. Otherwise, just wait for him. Even a green charge shot would uh, would make him make a shield flip up if you want to go more safely. Otherwise, take the damage boost, take another damage boost, charge, and then a half charge, and then you just climb up. So you can just gap jump city here. You can just ignore these now. This platform right here, we'll go back to that in a moment. But for now, we're going to focus on this climb a bit. Very, 
impossible climb. We'll, you'll see why in a moment. So you're gap jumping this, you want to jump off of that, and then you want to neutral kick this, and then you want to double kick off of that to reach that. This is what we call an iceless style jump. Because on x Plane 100 percent if you go Kawing or second, you have to do that jump like I just did right there, except reverse. Um, to get up there and get the heart. This is basically what you're doing right now. Except you're not getting a heart, you're just progressing through the thing. So this is a very difficult thing to do. In fact, you would not, don't expect this to get this first try either. Like, even the other world record holder for, like, the, the original cartridge of this game, his world record, he, he, he had this second try. And he basically did something like double kick here, double kick there, and get up there. Which is probably a little faster. But, of course, you can always jump off of that and just climb up and do that. What I like to do for some reason instead is I wall kick the bottom of that and then do it. It's, it almost helps me line up uh, the spot to double kick at so I can get up there. You can do a single kick. It's not recommended. It's, it's a bit it gets a bit harder to line yourself up you know what I mean so now we're gonna to get to this platform this platform will rotate directions this platform is a bit of a pain at least in my opinion to utilize. might be able to fix this. Okay, I fixed it. Ah. Uh, well, anyway, you can take it up all the way up here. Um, but as you can see, if you mess up and you accidentally go out through, you gotta start all over again. So for that reason alone, you'll never see me do that during runs, even casual runs. But that will be your best bet. Once you get that down pack, it will be your best bet and it will be like the easiest way. But it's also going to be the slowest way. So now I'm going to try my hardest to get back up here. You can tell it's very difficult. Let me start from going back down here and do it. It's a wonder how I got this first try on my emulator world record. There we are. And if you want, if you still have full health by the time you get up here, go ahead and grab these. Yeah, go ahead and grab these. Normally, that still hit me, whatever. Normally, I just take the bonk and go with it, but we're going to act like we're not taking a bonk and going with it. Also, a good source for health here. Maybe not. Make a liar out of me, why don't you? <laughs>
Now this guy right here, he's facing the other way, so he is a free kill. So, bump this guy, bump this guy, jump over this guy, bump this guy, and start your charge. You will actually have a purple charge by the time you get in here. And with this guy... He seems scary, but believe it or not... He's really not that bad. Notice what I mean when it comes to like the, the double charge shots. You can just spam double charge shots on them. And release them fast because you're on the wall. So this fight will actually go a bit faster than this. You can alternate to regular level 2 charge shots and level 3 double charge shots to get a more consistent DPS, but stick to the, just the double charge shots for consistency. And that's what you don't want to happen. But you got the gist of it. This is basically, you know, this this boss is the most potato boss of this game, I think. So now we're going to go on to refights. I believe this is where you go to refights at. And I'm not going to dabble too much into the refights, because it's the refights. But I will point out that the boss rooms will be a bit different than originally on the, the 8 Maverick stages. Uh, you know what, let's go over here. And for a bonus, I'll show you each of their weaknesses as well for comparisons so you seeing them all uh, without you seeing all the fights without without the uh, weakness now you're gonna see it with the weakness and notice there are spikes up there I made a bad save state but it's, it's cool So if you jump too high, you're going to die. And for lack of knowing how to use these, <laughs> I'm going to die anyway. <laughs> but no, uh... Now how about this one? This room is a bit, uh... I that room is this one right here, I think. Yeah. It's a bit smaller compared to the other one. But this is this guy's, uh, weakness. And there's a main reason why I want to show you this. You notice how OP these things are. And of course, he's going to get mad. He might get zapped here. But watch, but watch his death animation. That's the only Maverick I know that has a death animation like that. But as you can see, each room is a bit different than the original boss rooms you had to fight them in in the first place. So you gotta keep that in mind. 
And this is the only game where refrights are actually a bit different than, you know, other games are relatively the same. Like I said, I'm not going to put too much time on it. Alright, so... Now we're going to move on to the final part of the game. And this time we're actually going to go full armor just because I really want to show off uh, the use of the double charge buster shots. So, we've been to this place before, actually. It's even going to look the same. But, the background noise, noise, music is different. Oh god. So, we just go over there like normal. Except we're just avoiding... I did not do that right. Alright, so first of all, we're going to fight our beloved brother in arms, Zero. We have to, we have no choice. See, we gotta snap him out of it. Make a save state here. And this is how you're going to fight Zero. Don't go too high though, because he'll dash at you and do the ground pound on you. You do not want him to do that. You also want to make sure you're on this side too, to initiate the cutscene a little faster. But this is essentially the fight. There is a faster, but more... How do I explain this? Precise? I would like to call this the jump rope technique, because it feels like you're playing jump rope with them. But, um... It's actually really difficult, and the only person I know that does this, see what I mean once you mess up? Um, but the only person I know that's ma actually mastered that is Daringville, the other world record holder. And that was Zero's fight in a nutshell. As long as you time things dip, uh, as well as like that, and you don't go too high, Zero's going to stay where he's at, and you're not going to get touched. Alright, so we're going to go down here at some point. We're going to... Right here. Now, both... Uh, green shots and blue shots do too. So you can start off with a half charge. Now I'm going to make a safe state here. Hit him with the heat. That's bad RNG if he does that. Really bad RNG if he's doing that. Yeah, basically just... You do not want to get hit by that thing, by the way. Because that does massive damage. 
And he and what makes it hard is like he's a, he's invulnerable for a bit before until he until he uses it until he releases it. I mean, now that tough that fight is actually tougher than it looks. Um, you want to be careful, especially he'll charge at you and wear him pretty fast. Now this fight right here, I'm gonna make another safe state. Go along this, you won't get hit by the laser. Do this. This fight will get laggy, I will warn you that. It got really laggy here. If you're playing on SNES 9X though, it won't be that bad. And also remember, you have you have sub tanks. Use them if you got them. Especially if you have it during this point. Or up to this point on the last uh, thing. And also, don't be afraid to get the uh, drops either. Because sometimes there will be drops. I bonked into that guy just so... Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, the only thing outside of the actual weakness that can hurt him is charge shots and double charge shots, but the char- but the doubles gotta be fully- Charge. So it's, yeah, the, the second- the first charge gotta be fully charged or else it's gonna- like that. And you notice he ain't got no health bar either. Um, you also notice he's changing. Uh, colors. The more he hit him. That's how. That's how you'll know his uh, health. How low his health is. And he's getting to the orange. And his health is getting pretty low now. Wait until he gets, the re gets to the red one though. So let's just say, for sake, for safety, we're uh, going to use one of these. And uh, it's almost, my time is almost up, so I'm going to try to like, finish this. Yeah. So, this is, you kind of basically want him to get caught there. And this is scripted, so... Normally you use another one of those things here, and that's, that would be time. This is how you do safety and play Mega Man X2. Buster only. I hope everybody has enjoyed this. Um, I am. I've been Dragon Metal Queen. If uh, anybody has questions about anything Buster only related, you can contact me anytime you want. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, everybody who's been doing this and everybody who's been organizing this. Y'all are awesome. Y'all are kings and queens of this, and I'm ever, I'm going to be forever thankful to have this opportunity to share this. So, without wasting further time, I'm out of here. Y'all have a safe, good night.